think painting is a bit like jazz. And jazz is, um, when you play jazz, you're playing your own life. You're playing your experiences. You're playing things that have happened, good or bad. case, he wants you almost to be looking at it with your ears. You use the kind of sense you make of music to make the sense of the art. When I stand in front of a canvas, for the first time, I'm, I'm a little frightened myself. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it wondering what's going to come out, and then I start putting some paint on, and all of a sudden it starts to paint itself. It starts to evolve. Herb, as a person, is a very gentle, soft-spoken, unassuming soul. And his paintings are, it, the, the voice of his paintings and his sculpture as well, has such power and um, volume to it that you wouldn't think that this would be coming out of this person. Well, I'm, I'm kind of a shy guy. You know, the reason I play the trumpet is because it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> and I, I guess I, I gravitate towards colors that are uh, electric and have a, you know, a vibrancy to them. It gives me a voice that maybe uh, it's speaking, you know, some, some inner feelings that uh, sometimes are not coming out. Art is very much like music. Painting and sculpting is very much like music in the sense that I'm looking for composition. I'm looking for harmony. I'm looking for transpositions. I want the canvas to swing. This painting didn't start out being a dancing mountain. It wound up being a dancing mountain. And that doesn't stay a mountain to our eyes very long. But it's that becoming and going that most interests her. The fact that the mountain dances is more important than what's dancing as a mountain. I think there's beauty in shapes, you know, I don't think you have to uh, analyze it beyond that. There's certain shapes that just are appealing when you see a beautiful tree or a beautiful flower. Herb's sculpture is a softer side of the artist. It is more round and moving and flowing where the, the art is more staccato and vibrancy and excitement, but the sculpture is calmer. It speaks to you in a quieter, more modulated voice. It cries out to be touched. It cries out for people to participate in the art. A lot of museums have this cordoned off space for people not to get too close. And I, I like very much for people to put their hands on the pieces. So I like this tactile feel. I like the feeling of being able to run up and hug a piece.
I get to put on these big chunks spontaneously, and then Herb likes to come along with the wire and go, <laughs> shoo! <laughs> yeah, that's a pleasure of mine, too. <laughs> I'm watching your face when I do it. <laughs> Musicians collaborate when they make music, whereas fine artists, particularly sculptors, painters, tend to work alone in their studio, and they don't work with other people, and other people don't make aesthetic judgments for them. Working with Herb is a completely new and different approach in that aspect. So, I have no idea why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it. Because... I don't want it to look like uh, I whacked it with this type of hammer, so I'm gonna, just going to play with it a bit, but I like, I like what I did with the surface. Almost like a feather. Then you can... You, know, you can get an effect like that, that might... Sometimes some of these effects look a bit contrived, so you have to be careful not to go overboard. It'd be like putting too much echo on a record. I like to look at pieces like uh, I'm, a, I'm a viewer myself, walking in on it and wondering whether I like it. And trying to not pretend, but having the feeling of not doing it, just being on the other side of looking at a piece of art. And when it strikes me in a positive way, I know I'm on the right, right track. kind of integrated this, this feeling that was on this wing, if you will. But that's just representing this spot here. I mean, now we have to you know, like get some continuity in the whole piece. It's not enough just to have one section that you might think is interesting. It has to, it all has to bind together. And the hardest part of Sculpting is that it's a 360-degree medium. It's, it's, it's not something that just works in one, one angle. If it doesn't work all the way around, it doesn't work. doesn't really work creatively, he lives creatively. He feels at most ease when he is creating, and he is creating all the time. It's a bit of a mystery for me as well responding to uh, what the canvas is telling me. So as I'm working on it, I'm hearing something. I'm hearing something that's saying, you know, try this, try that, and don't do that. <laughs> Every artist hopes to do something new. Every artist needs to do something distinctive, something that looks like nobody else's work but his or hers. And Herb has achieved that.
Herb has this tendency of dividing up the painting into discrete areas defined as rectangles and squares and, uh, and windows and cubicles. I feel like there are certain shapes that feel real comfortable together. And so in order to not confuse them, you know, I'll put them in their separate little spot and um, have them co-mingle and get together. I seem to be able to remember shapes that I like, that I see in trees, that I see in clouds. see in the ocean. What I see in, in a roaring fire. walk into the kitchen in the morning, he's got a blowtorch in his hand and he's blowtorching some wax <laughs> that he's melting in the, in the oven. And all around the kitchen, there, there are like, you know, 50, 75 little maquettes made of uh, wax. My wife is not crazy about me doing this, but it's out of my control. <laughs> I have no choice. When I'm doing this, I feel like I'm improvising. I'm going with it. I'm, I'm taking, you know, um, chances with what I see. The body sensation I have is not totally relaxed. It's, until I get into a shape that that's comfortable, I, I feel just a wee bit uh, uncomfortable myself, which I, I think is part of the uh, creative process for me. Well, do you buy a used car from the guy who made this? It's free. I like the, f the freedom aspect of it. That's why I'm so crazy about jazz. When Herb creates a piece of art, especially his three-dimensional sculpture, I really like the way he approaches the surface of the medium. He tends to rub the clay and scrape the clay and kind of approach it in a fearless kind of format. He um, just, he has a tenuous, uh, relationship to external reality and I I appreciate that. She can fly. Well for me personally sculptures were always these magical mystical objects that sort of had their own personalities like walking on a beach and looking at a piece of driftwood yeah and you find a piece of driftwood and it's magic and you show it to your friends and say, wow, that's a fantastic piece of driftwood. It, there's sort of a universal aesthetic there. It doesn't really look like anything, but you all agree that it's fantastic looking. And I always look for that kind of aesthetic. So I like things to have hidden meaning as well as an obvious positive response to them. is his self-expression. 
These are words and sentences and conversations. And when you can see the sculptures and the paintings together in one room, you can almost sense that they're having conversations. In the 60s, when I was traveling with the uh, Tijuana Brass, playing in different parts of the world, I used to go to museums, and I found myself really uh, appreciating great works of art. And then I got into the modern art section. For some reason, I gravitated towards that. I really liked that freedom. It reminded me of a Charlie Parker solo. It reminded me of somebody that was just able to express themselves in a real spontaneous and free way. And that's what I've always tried to do with my music. And I've pursued that ever since with, with painting and sculpting. Herb's art doesn't aspire to the condition of music. I think it presumes the condition of music. When he's making visual art, he's thinking like a musician. When abstract art was introduced at the beginning of the last century, people introducing it were thinking in, in terms of music. He's reaching for the same deeper point in you as it's coming from him, whether it's music or it's art. That sense of kind of beautiful logic, where I guess you could say the logic is so beautiful that it moves the emotions, that it's the, where logic and passion meet. Put your tennis shoe on it and do something interesting. See that line right there? That looks terrible. <laughs> I'm looking for the feeling of it. The musician's piece that I sculpted is, is not about me playing all these trumpets. It's about what it feels like or the feeling of playing. The experience of leaning back and just closing your eyes and letting it fly. There are times when I'm, I get dark. I've been through dark periods. In fact, I've experimented with painting with very little light or, or, or almost no light. I want to just kind of experience the canvas uh, in the most, in the dimmest, you know, uh, uh, possible way.
you can think you're going to start with a happy tune and what you do with that tune turns out to be more reflective and even melancholy than you expected. It's definitely coming, but so is Christmas. <laughs> If it doesn't feel finished, it's not finished, you know? So he could keep going with a piece for months, get away from it for a while, and then keep coming back to it until he knows finally it's finished. The orchestration is done. I'm afraid to touch it now. And then there's a point when somebody is talking to me, and I don't know who that person is, but uh, he or she is saying, it's time to stop. And that's when I stop. While you're in the presence of that piece of art, a part of you becomes a part of that artist, and a part of that artist's soul becomes a part of you. And I guess in reality, that's what art is all about. It's about taking someone's spiritual presence and putting it on a canvas to share with the world. Thank you.